explain the Lewis structure of sulfate. So we'll begin by doing the accounting of the atoms involved. And the number of valence electrons in each one. Sulfur, oxygen, and the negative two charge has to be accounted for, so we're going to throw in two electrons as well. Sulfur is a chalcogen in group 16, therefore it has six valence electrons. Oxygen is also a chalcogen with six, but there are four in sulfate, so we'll multiply by four. And finally, the extra two electrons for the, um, the negative two charge. Five times six plus two, 32 electrons. So we begin by drawing our, our preliminary structure. Sulfur at the center, oxygen atoms, and satellites. That uses up eight electrons already. So that leaves us with 24 electrons to scatter among four atoms. So we're going to put six on each oxygen atom. We'll draw them in a little circle so you can see them more easily. That uses up 32 electrons. 4 times 6, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Now let's check for the octet, if the octets are being fulfilled for each one of these atoms. Sulfur has a full octet, so that would be okay. Uh, and each one of the oxygen atoms is okay. They each have 2, 4, 6, 8. The bond counts for 2. And the charges. Sulfur would normally have six valence electrons, but it only actually possesses four because each one of these counts for one when it comes to counting up charge. So sulfur would have a plus two charge under these conditions. And uh, I think we can uh, get a more stable structure than that. The oxygen atoms as well have two, four, six, plus one, seven. So each one of the oxygen atoms in this drawing would have a negative one charge, formal charge. So we have lots of formal charges in this molecule. Uh, I think we can modify the diagram to reduce at least some of those formal charges. We can take this bonding pair and turn it into a, uh, sorry, this lone pair and turn it into a bonding pair, do the same here, and we end up with this. Sulfur will have an expanded octet, which is tolerable because sulfur appears as atomic number 16. Anything larger than phosphorus, phosphorus or anything larger, is able to accommodate <coughs> expanded octets. So we continue drawing the rest of the molecule. It still has all the remaining uh, electrons. Now if we analyze this structure, we'll see that the octet requirements are met for every one of the atoms involved. Sulfur has an expanded octet. All the oxygen atoms still have their octets. So that consideration is met. For charge, we see that these oxygen atoms no longer have formal charge. Only these two oxygen atoms have a formal charge, but that's okay because it's the sulfate anion. It's supposed to have a formal charge of negative two. In addition to that, um, the molecule has many possible resonance structures, meaning these double bonds don't actually have any um, real existence. What you really have is six bonds being shared over four positions. So if you were to measure the bond strength of the sulfur-oxygen bond and sulfate, you would find uh, that it had one and a half bond character. Each one of these bonds is like a one and a half bond. Why? Because these extra electrons that are here portrayed as double bonds are actually delocalized over the whole molecule. Remember, electrons don't like to be in the same vicinity, so they will delocalize. They will go as far apart as they can within the molecule. Keep in mind they're moving at around two-thirds the speed of light. So they're, they're a blur within the molecule. So it averages out. This is the structure of sulfate, the Lewis structure of sulfate. 